Gimbals are no new technology. We've seen a range of examples by various manufacturers and now GoPro have finally entered the gimbal market with their own unique version, the Karma Grip. The Karma Grip was first bundled with GoPro's drone, the Karma, offering an all-in-one air and ground stabilization solution. While the Karma drone may be temporarily unavailable due to a huge product recall, users can still pick up the Karma Grip for shooting on the ground for around $300. It's expensive but does offer a few extra features that others don't, making it rather flexible in use. Supplied within a hard shell carry case, perfect for carrying the unit around with you, users will find a USB-C charging cable, a Velcro strap, a mounting ring, and the Karma Grip stabilizer itself. With a matte black stealthy look and primarily plastic in construction, the grip looks and feels rather premium in the hand. At the business end of the unit, we have the standard three motor arrangement compensating for movements across all three axes. These feel rather smooth with an encompassing design. Even though GoPro do not market the Karma Grip as a waterproofed solution, I can't see the odd splash causing an issue. Although harnesses are available for the GoPro's Hero 4 and Session cameras, the grip is primarily designed for the Hero 5, which connects directly to the camera's USB-C and micro HDMI ports, thanks to the connectors on one side. A single lever on the bottom releases the harness, and with the side door on the GoPro camera removed, the camera slides into place, connecting to the two ports, while the harness rotates down and locks firmly into place. There's no wiggle room or movement whatsoever, a nice tight design, connecting the camera to the main body of the grip. Talking of the main body, just beneath the motor assembly we find the easy to use controls built right into the hand grip. Ergonomically designed for single thumb operation and completely flush with the body are controls for power and changing modes, adding highlights to videos, starting and stopping recordings, as well as a tilt lock button that also provides battery status all easily pressable and providing good tactile feedback. Further down the rubberized and seriously grippable hand grip, we have an integrated wrist strap as well as a USB charging port hidden under a rubber flap in the bottom of the unit. As a complete unit, I have to say it's one of the more attractive GoPro gimbal stabilizers out there, carrying the sleekest design I've seen to date. Being able to control most aspects of the camera directly from the grip is a great addition, although there's no thumbstick for panning and tilting the camera manually, taking away a rather useful feature found on most other gimbals. Also note that considering the Karma grip is primarily designed for the Hero 5 Black, I'd expect it to be perfectly balanced. It's not a huge issue and shouldn't affect performance at all, although it places some unnecessary stress on the roll motor whereas an otherwise balanced unit wouldn't. The grip also cannot stand on its own and there's no tripod mount built into the bottom of the unit for a tripod or extension pole to be attached. Instead GoPro include a metal mounting ring alongside the stabilizer. This can be attached by rotating the top of the hand grip, releasing the gimbal assembly and allowing for the mounting ring to slip in between the handle and the stabilizer. Reverse the process to attach the gimbal, locking the hand grip before rotating and clamping the mounting ring into place. It's a quick and easy procedure which now provides the familiar GoPro mounting point for attachment to various mounts in the GoPro mounting ecosystem, although the size of the entire unit does mean some thought needs to go into mounting. Placing the stabilizer lengthways rather than upright for example, although still achieving the same results. Nevertheless, when it comes to using the Karma grip, things couldn't be simpler. Power up the grip and within seconds the gimbal auto calibrates and is instantly ready for use. Thanks to that direct connection, the camera itself also powers up with the preview window on clear display, allowing you to frame your shot. The power button can then be used to cycle through camera modes, while the shutter and highlight buttons replicate those on the camera. You can't change any camera settings using the hand grip, such as resolutions or frame rates, but otherwise there's no need to physically touch the camera. Basic capture functions are all conveniently placed by the user's thumb, making the entire unit a breeze to use. When it comes to stabilization modes, normally the camera stays pointed forward regardless of how you hold the handle, but keeping the tilt button pressed will allow the camera to follow your tilt motion, re-aiming the camera above or below the horizon. Release the button to keep the camera at that angle, now stabilizing the shot at a different degree of tilt. Alternatively, users are also able to manually adjust the tilt by simply moving the harness to the desired position. The grip will then hold that tilt position. 
Whether this method has any adverse effects on the tilt motor remains to be seen with longer term use, but throughout testing the feature worked perfectly well. Double tapping the tilt button will unlock the tilt axis, ensuring the camera follows the tilt of the hand grip, so you can now move around the subject while keeping it framed in the shot. Finally, turn the grip upside down and twist it 180 degrees for an inverted mode, allowing users to capture perfect low angle follow cam points of view. The versatility of switching modes is there, just access differently to other competing GoPro gimbals. Although once mastered, they make using the Karma grip incredibly simple. There's no way to lock the pan axis though, so rotating side to side will always rotate the camera too. Nevertheless, when you're finished, keep the power button pressed to power down the gimbal, as well as the camera too. When it comes to performance, the results speak for themselves. Users will get that bobbing movement as they walk, which is common for all three axis stabilizers and needs a slight tweak in your walking style. But on the whole, the unit works wonderfully well, providing some nice stable footage. There's absolutely no complaints there. The video is perfectly smooth and stays pointed in the direction you need. Of course, the camera does have electronic image stabilization, but that can't perform anywhere near as good as a stabilizer like the Karma Grip. In addition, you'd have to drop the resolution to 2.7K or below and record no more than 60 frames per second to even switch the option on. With the Karma Grip, you can set the camera's resolution and frame rate to whatever you want. Those who are looking to capture audio may want to consider an external audio capture device though. Even with the better quality audio marketed with the GoPro Hero 5 cameras, audio capture is rather muffled and generally poorer when used in the grip. You'll also notice some motor noise in your video, which to be fair you can't hear too much in busy scenes, but in a very quiet shot you'll definitely hear it. In fact, place your ear up near the motors and you hear the constant motor buzz, something that definitely needs improvement. Nevertheless, also note that the built-in rechargeable battery, rated for up to 1 hour and 45 minutes of use, takes around 6 hours to fully charge with a 1 amp charger. That's crazy long considering it's a non-removable battery, although GoPro does offer a fast charger that promises to cut that time down to just under 2 hours. Even then, that's an additional purchase, and not a cheap one at that. For the moment though, the Karma Grip is a great stabilization solution for your GoPro camera. It performs wonderfully well, is easy to use, feels robust in the hand, and the ability to control the camera through the buttons in the hand grip make it a seriously convenient tool to carry with your GoPro. I can't help feeling a little underwhelmed though. Even though an extension cable can be used for remote operation, I like to see a wireless solution. There's no connection to the smartphone either, so no way to rotate or move the camera within the gimbal when mount to a static object. The inability to lock the pan axis, as well as the motor noise, also cause a hindrance. Versatility is what GoPro cameras are known for, yet I'd be still inclined to choose the Removeview S1 over GoPro's own solution. Okay, so we can't control the camera directly, but with a completely splash-proof body, wrapped in an incredibly robust metal design, OLED screens with several shooting modes to switch through, a quick and easy split design from the hand grip, with complete wireless operation thanks to the small Bluetooth remote, even the changeable batteries for longer shooting sessions, it seems to outclass the Karma grip in almost every way. For those loyal to GoPro, the Karma grip is a great unit and stabilises the attached camera wonderfully well. For those after more versatility though, the Removeview S1 continues to set the benchmark.